Test, test, test. Is Mike T doing a quick uh, test for my Camtasia to check the levels, make sure that my sound is all right, that you guys can hear me, and uh, not hear all of the extraneous audio that is going on all over this place. So um, I am going to uh, open it up new project new project I found this drawing I was doing it for a book um, it was going to be in the Def Jam 25 book and uh, <clears throat> at the last minute they decided to go with my Jay-Z um, painting instead so um, this one wasn't used so I think I'm going to use this one for uh, just like a promo thing and one day I am going to do a book when I do, it's going to need content. So that's what this is right here. Found some good pictures of some of these uh, legends of hip hop. And I'm going to paint them. All right, so same deal. Drawing on its layer, background on its layer. Uh, this one's going to be tonal, kind of like what I used to do back in the day with my Echo stuff. Try to clear up the screen a little bit here. All right. Okay. Uh, clear the screen a little bit. And I just realized that the noise that is probably being heard is my mouse, not my. not my keyboard so I'm gonna get rid of the mouse and go to my stylus which is gonna be considerably more quiet oops forgot to get the hand all right so make a new layer grab my brush go to the Mike T scratch board tool First, let's go over to preferences and check the brush tracking whenever I turn it on. Turn on painter, I like to go brush tracking. Now you see what it's doing here is something that's a, it's a little bug um, where, I don't know whether it's on Wacom's side or Corel's side, but when I go to my brush tracking, uh, the size of the brush doesn't vary until, click on the background, come back. Uh-oh, what do you see? All right, brush pressure is back. All right, so now that works. And what I'm gonna do is select some colors here. So I'll just grab my eyedropper tool, uh, get the color family I wanna work with. Don't think I like that at all. Maybe there's a better way to do it. Select my background color uh, and just work in some shades of what we have on this background keep it nice and tonal all right and again this is on its own layer so I can move it around get it out of the way um, let's get a nice poppy pop pop poppy color here which I got and I'm gonna make a new layer now uh, and let's block this bad boy see my colors all right got my colors and I am going to drop some color in there I don't like this color at all um, too gray and I'm not feeling it in fact I'm really not feeling the background color either so I think what I'm gonna do is yeah you know what it's got a green tinge to it which is ugly Let's change that. So tonal control equalize. Oof, I don't want that. I don't want that at all. I don't want equalize. I want to. I want to go to adjust colors. That's the one. saturation thing yeah that's that's probably it um, yeah 
mother's gonna get a sepia family. All right, that's good enough. So I'll keep that. Turn on my color palette now that's all messed up and let's go and adjust those colors as well. Reduce the saturation. Drop the value down. Yeah, there you go. Looks more like it. All right, so we'll go with something like that. Now I can go back to my layer. Let's name it. Uh, paint. So I'll know that's the layer I want to paint. Let's get this thing out of the way. This is why I need a dual screen setup so I don't have one yet. All right. There you go. So now I can start blocking in some of these dark colors in the recesses, in the shadows, under his chin. Just like all my stuff, I build everything up, <clears throat> working from that mid-tone and, uh, and bringing it back to the, uh, to the highlight colors. All right, so now what I'm realizing is this color right here isn't going to work anymore. So let's get something a little bit brighter than the background, like that. So I'll use these colors now to start to set off the areas that are raised on his skin. Again, I keep my eyedropper tool uh, connected to my stylus. I have my front button on my Intuo stylus set up as the eyedropper, and the rear button is set up to change the size of my brush. That way I can uh, really move on these things and not waste a lot of time with key commands. These colors a little, and I can even use the blur tool to uh, to mix them. Get something that I want. Always save, save often. Yeah. All right. One thing I like about this brush is that it gives you these irregular shapes that really add to just the random feeling of your painting. It doesn't feel like, doesn't feel as much like a digital painting. It feels like something that's hand done, for lack of a better term. Um, so at this stage, it's all just blocking in the colors. It doesn't have to look pretty. As long as I get things where I need them to be, then I can go in and work the details. Let's get to his eyes. And you know what? I'm just going to paint right over his eye because his eyes in shadow and I can come back to my delights. Um, the whites of his eyes later. It's more important to get the values right right now.
was going through my portfolio today and I can't even think of how many times I've painted Jay-Z for different books and magazines and stuff. It's like ridiculous. I think I should probably should probably get like a commission for for painting this dude so much but um did a lot of stuff for vibe and source back in the day and some of these new hip-hop magazines and stuff i mean uh books rather just really um they really asked me to do them a lot You know, turn up my opacity here and start to block in some of these darks. And the thing to bear in mind is, if you want your whites to pop, you gotta really make good solid blacks. And by blacks on this piece, I mean the dark browns. said before I'm not concerned about the likeness at this point don't really care if it looks like them or not worry about that stuff later for right now we're just working on getting the foundation and building upon it I'm gonna lightly start to put in some of these lights now I don't like to put the, the really pop whites in until I kind of have everything worked out. But uh, I'll just start to throw some of these lighter tones in right now just to figure it all out. You know, people ask me about technique. A lot. I get that question from new artists and people just beginning to get, you know, go down the road of portraiture. And, uh, you know, my whole thing is this, these pieces are kind of like a jigsaw puzzle to me. You know, it's all about fitting things where they belong. Um, I was a big fan of Bob Ross back in the day. For one thing, he had an awesome afro, and uh, for another thing, he uh, was one of the few art shows that came on TV when I was young. And um, so, his whole thing was about, you know, just putting stuff in and feeling good about it and moving on to the next thing. I kind of adopted that theory. It's not heavy. thing about Jay-Z is he has an unmistakable mouth. You cannot miss <clears throat> you cannot miss this guy's profile at all. Um, you know, for some people if you see just a small section of their face you can't figure it out, but with him he's got a signature look to him. So and part of that is the way that his mouth looks. Yeah. That's why I like doing him as a caricature. If you look, I did a piece for Vibe a while ago for his, uh, for his 40th birthday, they ran an article um, and I had to do a caricature of him video of it on my site but that was fun you know I was able to use myself for the lighting reference and uh, and then you know 
just through pictures of him, various reference and stuff, I was able to kind of get his likeness just by, you know, the fact that he has such a signature look. His eyes too. I mean, it, you can't you can't miss Jay Z. You know, doesn't hurt that he's like a mega star and a wealthy dude and married to Beyonce and all that. Pals around with Obama, but you know, it's like if you saw this guy on the street, you'd be like. this point I'm just looking for just landmarks on a picture you know trying to find these light areas that are going to set off the overall darkness of, uh, of his eyes This didn't take that long. And now, at this point, what this would be is my base. You know, I would knock in these creases on his forehead a little bit. He has some deep creases, but he does have furrowed brow. Constantly looking back and forth between the picture and the and the painting. You can't be afraid to paint over what you've already done either. Like if you have if you have something you really like, you you just can't be too attached to it. You know, a lot of times I'll be working on a piece and think that I have nailed it. Ask my wife or my kids to take a look at it, and they'll point out something that I just did not see because I'm too close to it, you know. And at first, I'll be like, "Nah, you guys don't know what you're talking about." But uh, then, after I step away a while and come back, I'm like, "Hey, you know what? I have to hit that area all over again." And nine times out of ten. know if it's because the drawing is so dark or what, but change gears around. Maybe what I'll do is turn down the opacity on the drawing right now because it's like 50%. Let's bring it down. It's set for multiply. Let's bring it down to like 30. And always make sure you go back to your paint layer because there's been several times where adjust the line drawing and then start painting on the line drawing and you're stuck.
one thing about my stuff is if you look at it from far away, I was just talking about this earlier today. If you look at it from far away, it's really tight, you know, but if you get in close, you can tell it's just, it's really, it's way looser than you thought it was. So, yeah, that kind of came about from, uh, from the fact that when I first started digital painting, I would zoom in really close and just work as tight as I could, you know, I wanted everything to be perfect, and when I was done, people would look at it and be, you know, they'd ask me, hey, why, what, what filter did you use to make that, well, it's, you know, it's an awesome photo, it looks kind of like a piece of artwork, so, it's kind of a crushing, crushing blow when you realize that you spent all these hours on a, on a painting, blood and sweat into it and at the end people do not even realize that it's a painting it's not cool and at that point you might as well just just take a photo you know so many good photo photographers and you know photo manipulators out there guys like David Hill that just do these amazing pieces Their stuff is the opposite, you know. It, it's a photo, and people are like, "Man, that's a dope piece of artwork." So, I said all that to say this: don't work too tight. We're good. That's my paint. So what will happen is at some point, invariably on every one of these pictures that I paint, the likeness will come, you know, it will come about. And uh, it's almost like when you go swimming and get water in your ear. When the water comes out, you're like, oh man, you feel like you have super hearing. So for most of this piece, I'll be looking at this thing like, man. Doesn't look anything like them. Not gonna get it. And then at some point it will look like them. But not yet. cleaning out my computer today and ran into, I found a folder that um, was nested <clears throat> inside of a bunch of untitled folders that had all this artwork that I did that I just totally forgot about. Like half done stuff and pieces that I finished that might not have been approved by a client. And I just totally forgot about that stuff. Christmas, you know, it's like, I don't remember 
this time. So I need to start doing a better job of cata cata cataloging my work. So at this point, I would say that's a good enough, it's a good enough block. You know, I got the colors kind of, the tones where I want them. Everything's kind of where I need it to be. And at this point, what I would do is I'll first step back, flip it. I'm like, okay, upside down it looks a little better. It's always good to flip around the canvas. All right, so now what I can do is save it, and then I will go above my line drawings. Let me re rework of this line. I think there's just another part of the line up here. And I can layer, and now I can paint on top of the line, so I can really start to uh, pull in some of those details and get it to look more like him. And now I can zoom in a bit. All right, so in case you didn't know, I'm using Corel Painter. This is version 12. And uh, one thing I really like about Painter is I can, uh, I can blur an empty layer and it will pick up all the colors below it so I don't have to it's kind of like a non-destructive thing I don't have to worry about messing up something that I really like so I can go and grab my just add water tool and just turn up the opacity a little bit and uh, I can go and kind of just work some of these areas so I'm pushing colors around some stuff a little less harsh than it was before. And there's some people that go to town with a blur tool. I don't like that because again, you're, you're making your piece look like a photo, you know? Um, I like having those hard edges and, and all my work. So this is just gonna be stage two. push around this stuff until it the likeness comes together just that much more and then I'll paint over everything. And you can see I adjust the size of my brush and, and get rid of any more. I hope the audio sounds good on this recording because I don't want to buy another I don't want to buy another uh, microphone.
great thing about this is now I'm on top of the pencil, so I can see I can just make that pencil line disappear. And if there's something that I don't like, I'll just erase it and it's back. So there's a lot of little transitions that go on in the eyes uh, between highlights and darks that make them really pop. And that's going to be fun. I can't wait to get into that. You know, stuff like his nose is you know, not a whole lot going on there. Um, his mouth, I'm going to add a ton to it. I'll probably look at other pictures of him for his mouth because I really want to get the creases in the lip. Um, just make it pop. image I found is uh, I guess I'm gonna do that. This image I found is kind of what it is, so I might have even gotten this from Def Jam, I don't know. Um, I think they did see one of my jam images. So that's stage two, right? We went and blurred it. Turn off the blur, you can see all the stuff going on underneath. All right, so now we can start painting on top of this layer. And when I start to get the likeness to come together, what I'll do is I'll start combining layers, but at this stage, whatever it's not that many I never like to have you know I've never been one of those guys that has 20 or 30 layers though that's just crazy to me you got to commit it sometime pull the trigger um, all right so I'm really gonna set this off so I'm gonna get this dark brown let's make it really dark kind of for opacity sucker off the page. And again, because I'm a mono one layer here, I don't have to worry about, you know, making too many mistakes. I can just go and erase, erase the Probably could have done this on the blocking layer, and I probably should have, but whatever. All right. So now what that allows me to do is I can go in and I can start concentrating on making some of these shadow areas darker. Just add another layer of depth to the likeness. And you can see that helps already, man. This thing is starting to jump. Get that dark, dark on there. leave a reflected light on his lip. It's kind of bouncing back from his bottom lip to his top. What I can do is turn down the opacity on my eraser and just 
been fortunate enough to uh, fortunate enough to build a career on painting people and uh, it's a funny story because when I first started doing artwork I could never paint likenesses I just was not good at it at all to college and just kind of didn't know what I was going to do. I knew I wanted to be an artist, but like I said, I couldn't really nail people's likenesses. So I kind of just stayed away from it. I did easy stuff. Um, and um, something happened. And I just one day kind of got it. You know, I don't know if it was through practice or what. I well, to practice but I don't know why one day I could get it and the day before I couldn't you know it was almost like that that much of a, a light switch had been turned on so ever since then I've been painting people and uh, I guess I was doing a good job because I got work from it raised and lowered areas. Camtasia. Pause real quick. There. So I gotta get a lot darker under his under his lip on this side. Pull up some of that color from his shirt. Yeah, that helps big time. What'll happen is by not being afraid to go really dark and kind of juxtaposition the, the shadows off the light areas you really make the piece pop you know, last thing you want is a flat piece of artwork so I can see he's kind of got a rim light bounce light on his lip here
too much. Another thing I'm starting to do that I shouldn't do is uh, just stick in one area too much. You know, you constantly move around. And you can see that just by just by using this technique, even though this is a, a monochrome piece, it really starts to take on a real photographic quality. It starts to feel like something that could be you know, a picture. It's got the depth where it needs to have it. Um, and I think the thing that I like about doing this work is you know, you can get something that's even better than a picture to me, you know. Um, I think there's some really awesome photographers out there. But, you know, given the choice between seeing a painted movie marquee and a photo of, you know, I don't know, Harrison Ford is solo or something you know I'd, I'd rather see the artwork every time something about it just takes me back to those days when they didn't have photos for movies you know they, everything was illustrated you know even those old exploitation movie posters I love I love painting that stuff and looking at that work because stuff was awesome you know the movie could be terrible and uh, and it would still have a great poster we just don't get that anymore everything's photos now you know? so I'm not hating I, I think you need to have both you know you can have you can have amazing photographers doing amazing work have illustrators still, you know, living side by side and it just doesn't get stale if you mix it up.
I think if you have too much of one thing, it just really can get kind of boring, you know? Everybody's kind of aping everybody else's style, and So he's got some some waves going on in his hair here, and uh, all I'm doing to represent that is just uh, kind of scribbling in lines. You know, and if you step back, it works. I got a lot of layering to do here. It's all about the scribble scrabble. Make sure I save because I know as soon as I start getting happy, it's going to die. 